A very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us on the Thursday edition of the show. I mean, me at a day bio. Well, on the show tonight, we will uh, continue with our post-mortem of uh, the matches played in the FIFA series, uh, the one uh, involving the Super Eagles of Nigeria, two games under coach George Finidi. We'll talk about that. We'll look at what's happening on the domestic scene, the Nigeria Premier Football League. We'll also talk about the women uh, as well. Uh, and of course, we'll look at uh, the English Premier League, some of the things happening around some of our players. Uh, and that's the outlook of the show tonight. It's a two-man show. My colleague Arsenal Kona Akman is suited and ready. And of course, tonight, we'll be going on a trip across the money spinning world of sports. As everyone joining us on the show, still an action-packed world of sports. So much going on in our world of sports. Yes, you just mentioned the international friendly window. We'll talk about it. What happened to the Super Eagles of Nigeria in that game against the Eagles of Mali? Maybe because it was a clash of Eagles, you know. Uh, something just went wrong for Nigeria, and that's what we'll talk about it. Coach Fenelie George has been talking. Some of the players are reacting. We will add our voices to that conversation on the show tonight. Today we'll talk about uh, the power of sports to transform lives, you know. And every day when we take a look at sports, we know the Emida is so powerful, it can also contribute uh, to the world achieving those sustainable development goals. The Commonwealth Secretariat, they have put together some events to, you know, promote the celebration of the International Day for Sports for Sustainable Development and Peace. We'll have that conversation tonight. And of course, you mentioned what's going on in the Nigerian Women's Football League. Some interesting results. I'm super, super pumped up for the show tonight, Yemi. All right. Uh, before we get into that conversation uh, around uh, the Commonwealth and uh, some of the innovations, let me quickly introduce our guest uh, in the Lagos studio. I can't remember the last time I sat with him. Damla Lolifani joins us this Thursday evening. Uh, greetings to you, Damla. Thanks for joining us on the show tonight. Yeah, uh, Yemi. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, good evening. Nice to see you again. Uh, yeah. I remember <laughs> the last time we did this. All right. Um, your immediate reaction, uh, we're going to go into some conversation around the Commonwealth, but I want to get your immediate, your thoughts, just as I mentioned, George Finidi, Super Egos, your thoughts in, in a few seconds. Um, I think he, he had a good, um, what I would call a dress rehearsal. Um, uh, at, le at least we could see the intent of what he wanted to do. He would, Finidi is more pro a very attacking minded kind of football, progressive football. Uh, if he was able to put his thought through the players in those two games, it's a different conversation. Uh, the first game was a bit better. The second game, for Super Eagles to play 90 minutes without a shot on target, it's, uh, but again, you also have to look at the personnel. He didn't have right. the best of his players around. All right, all right, all right. Also, we talked about it. Maybe we just go straight uh, into it. Uh, some talks uh, around uh, the Commonwealth uh, Games and some of the things, innovations uh, put into the it. We're talking about the International Day uh, for Sports uh, Development and Peace. Also, let me just add it over to you from here. We're listening, and of course, uh, maybe you have one or two contributions. That's right, Yemi. April the sixth every year. We celebrate the International Day for, for Sports, for Development and Peace. And the Commonwealth Secretariat, uh, just about two days ago, they put together an event uh, to usher us into the celebration of that International Day for Sport for Development and Peace. It's the eighth Commonwealth debate, you hear me? What was that debate all about? It had a theme, Artificial Intelligence, is the answer to accelerating the power of sports to help achieve the sustainable development goals by 2030. Because everyone is talking about AI now. How can we bring it into sports? Particularly that we know that sports is so powerful. Now using AI and it help us accelerate those goals that we have, you know, set for uh, the sustainable development goals for 2030. So the Commonwealth uh, sector, they had that debate. There were panels, there were panelists for those who supported and those who were against. I wasn't part of it. But Lane Robinson is the head of social policy development at the Commonwealth Secretariat. He joins us now on the program. Good evening, Wayne. Welcome again to Sports Tonight. No, thank you very much. Thank you for having me this evening again. It's a pleasure to be here. 
Yeah, Lane, good to have you on the show. I just talked about the debates that you guys had at the Commonwealth Secretariat. Now, after listening to those propositions, do you agree that artificial intelligence can actually help in accelerating uh, the sustainable development goals so we can achieve them by 2030? No, so this was the this was the this was the crux of the matter. Um, this is what mm. the debate was about. So the the debating teams had the opportunity to work together to persuade a live audience and an online audience of uh, which argument held sway. Well, well, the results of this um, you know sport in, in in policy discussion, if you will, were the those who opposed the mood. They said no. Artificial intelligence is not the answer, not the answer. It is a probably part of the solution, but it's not the answer. They won the debate. But I think it was instructive for us to listen in and to weigh up these arguments about the role and the contribution of artificial intelligence, because it's sort of a popular thing. And the Commonwealth is interested in facilitating these kinds of conversations, because whatever is innovative, whatever is, is going to help our countries, we are interested to pursue and to support that. That's right. The last time you were here, we're talking about football for good. Now we're talking about the power of sports, particularly in helping the society. Now, going away from that debate and what you guys are doing at the Commonwealth Secretariat, uh, does, does sports actually have the power to transform societies? Well, this is, this, is, this, is, this is what we believe in the Commonwealth. And so there are a few sustainable development goals that we think sport actually has a real direct benefit on. For example, health. You know, we have a lot of um, non-communicable diseases, obesity, um, risk factors around healthy lifestyles, living and eating healthy, obesity. These issues are critical. Diabetes, these, these lifestyle illnesses are, are beginning to affect many of our member states in the Commonwealth disproportionately. And so we believe sports has a, 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 a contribution to make in helping to manage and to reduce those non-communicable diseases, diabetes, obesity, through physical activity and, and good diet. And so we have been connecting those dots, linking our sports ministries department, our sports stakeholders with our health stakeholders and saying to them, let's, let's work together to reduce that. That's just one example. There are others. We believe sport can help with encouraging peaceful and cohesive societies. We believe it can help with gender, um, gender equality, promoting gender equality. We're seeing a lot of that now. We believe that sport can help with bringing inclusiveness into yeah. you know, society where personal disabilities are concerned. So we believe sport yeah. can actually be, you know, the, 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 uh, not, not the panacea, it doesn't solve all the problems, but it can certainly be the vehicle through which we communicate many of these societies' goals and objectives. That's right. I'll also hand you over to my colleague in Lagos. Uh, but just tell me, we're getting ready for the International Day of Sports for Development and Peace. That's an important day to every one of us that have been involved in sports. Now, going back to the significance of that debate that you guys, you guys had last week, this week, Tuesday, um, what are some of the things that came out of that discussion that you think we can use in celebrating that International Day? And once again, add our voices, let people understand that sports actually does have the power to promote development and give us sustainable peace. No, thank you so much. I mean, the, the, the big point that came out is that sport should not put its head in the sand. Sports sector, you know, media, you know, you, you colleagues that are, on the, are part of that industry, we shouldn't put our heads in the sand with respect to technology and artificial intelligence. What really came out was sports needs to be at the forefront of that shouldn't be left behind. Other sectors are gravitating towards the use of AI. We shouldn't be afraid to have constructive conversations about how AI can help. And in the Commonwealth, we have been bold enough to try that. The Secretary General has launched a consortium, all the big tech companies trying to see how we can put innovative use cases like sport with artificial intelligence and give re good results for our countries. And it's working. We're seeing lots of innovative ways that sports can work through AI to do this, to bring people together, to deal with the issues around, as I mentioned, inclusiveness in sport, to deal with helping people have better health, better health outcomes in sport. We're seeing that already beginning to take shape in the Commonwealth. Right. All right, um, let me just quickly throw this in from Lagos. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us again. Um, from this part of the world, a lot of people will be interested in when you're talking about bridging the gap, social inequalities, uh, and they'll be looking at the Commonwealth and its partners and uh, some of the ways uh, they can benefit. So uh, the youths uh, listening to you, they make up more than 60% um, of the population. Should they be excited? Should they be expecting um, some steps from the Commonwealth to ensure that they benefit from some of this 
uh, things that the Commonwealth is beginning to explore, to think about, uh, to bridge the gap and, uh, uh, you know, tackle some of these inequalities? Absolutely. No, thank you so much. I mean, this is one of the main things that um, the Commonwealth is promoting. We have a program called AI for Youth that is free to every young person in the world that will allow them to get certification um, from industry partners like Intel on their knowledge and understanding of AI and the basics and the fundamentals of how to use it in, in solving some of the problems that they have in their own country context. So this is one of the programs I'm happy to tell you about at another time, maybe in full, but AI for Youth is, is, has been launched. Any young person anywhere in the Commonwealth, including in Nigeria and in Africa, can benefit from the course. Um, it's, it's free, we're not charging anyone for it. It's fully funded um, and, and, and young people can really um, take advantage of that. And the reason we're doing that is because we don't want young people in the global south to be left behind. You know, some of the, the developed countries will run away with some of these new technologies and will, will steam ahead with creating new jobs and new opportunities. Well, in the Commonwealth, we have a large proportion of young people and a large proportion of small and vulnerable states. And we don't want them to be left behind. So we have worked with industry partners through a huge consortium of industry sector leaders to bring programs like AI for youth to um, young people in their countries. We're also doing the same thing, by the way, for the public sector because we also don't want our governments to be left behind with this technology revolution. And so those programs are available. You can go to the Commonwealth's website. You can download the courses, take them at your own pace, and we can include them in curricula for schools and make sure that you know, no young person um, in, in the Commonwealth is left behind with this, particularly those in small and vulnerable states. That's right. Lane, I must say thank you so much for your time on the show tonight. We appreciate everything you guys are doing at the Commonwealth uh, Secretariat for the Development of Sports Worldwide. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. So that's it. Uh, Lane Robinson, Head of Social Policy Development at the Commonwealth Secretariat, talking to us about the International Day of Sports for Development and Peace. Uh, and and um, on a Friday, when you listen uh, to Lane, you can actually... So next, and I agree with him that yes, sport does have the power to transform societies. Uh, no doubt about it. Uh, he made some specific, uh, mentioned some specific areas that sport um, can transform societies. And that's why uh, sports, uh, the key word he mentioned is the fact that sport might not be absolute solution, but it's a vehicle. Uh, to, to achieving some of these goals. And I think the more we explore uh, the power of sport, the more we see that um, the, 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 the massive power that sport uh, can help us achieve. Uh, and I think particularly the question you may ask, uh, particularly in this part of the world, I, I, I'm not even sure we started scratching the surface of how far sport can go because we seem to still be get, getting carried away with the fact that we want to win medals. No, it's, it goes beyond that. It's about the mental development, the human capacity mm -hmm. development mm -hmm. of the individuals that are involved in sport. And when you develop that, then uh, there is no limit to what is possible. It's, it's beyond the tiny fraction of the population yeah. that gets to do the sports this professionally. Sport, it, it should embrace, you know, all those who are actively uh, participating, a broader circle. And, and I hope, I hope uh, the benefits uh, are all the youths we have access to it, especially uh, in this part of the world where we need such. All right, let's switch gears now and move on to talk about women's football. Uh, we're starting uh, with the ladies uh, tonight. Uh, Nigeria Women's Football League is where we're going, and we're taking a look at match day 11 uh, results. I'm going to go across the screen in a bit uh, to uh, take a look at uh, the result. We, but Damnola, we've always asked people uh, that uh, coming on the show, their impression about um, women's football so far. So your thoughts, when we take a look at the results, generally speaking, uh, a lot of people say less controversies, seems to be better managed. I don't know if you share that as well. I, I do, I do, absolutely. Uh, although I would say that in the last two seasons, the, the uh, the publicity seems to have dropped a little in the last two seasons. It has dropped off somehow. It has dropped off, uh, uh, and I don't know why. Um, yes, there is a change of guard in the leadership, but it shouldn't be. I mean, it's, uh, we're supposed to keep building mm -hmm. on whatever we've had. But in terms of controversy, I think we're still doing well in that regard. Uh, in terms of uh, fixing data and not necessarily switching it, I think they are doing better than the MPFL in that regard as well. Uh, and I think... Uh, 
we, it's a bit more competitive as well uh, over time. But I think we need to do more uh, in giving it publicity. As journalists, we are doing our part, but there's so much from the part of those that are in charge of the property uh, to be able to put um, so much attention put, to put it. it out. All right, uh, we'll uh, for to... example, uh, these games have ended um, hours ago, and the official table uh, after this match week 11 is still not on the, plat on the social media platform or the handle of the NWFL. I checked it just about five minutes before we came into the studio. Wow. All right. Uh, <laughs> piece of advice from Dabla Onifadi right there. Let me go across now. And uh, match is played uh, during the week. We'll look at it. Uh, group A is where we're starting. And um, uh, Austin is, um, you know, uh, with us listening in and some of these results. But, but let's look at it. R Royal Queens... Um, in Group A, a goalless Confluence Queens, Adamara Queens beat Niger Retails 2 0, Heartland Queens. Uh, somebody said the guys should learn how to do this. Uh, the men seem to be having problems, but, but the ladies not having any issues. Heartland Queen, Queens defeating Abia Angels 4 1. That's why Amazons uh, defeated Dana's ladies 3 1. That's in Group A. Uh, let's flip and uh, quickly look at um, Group B. Bias of Queens, 3-1 uh, victory over Remo Stars Ladies, FC Robo Queens, uh, had a 2 0 victory over XZ Queens, Ado Queens, uh, beat Sunshine Queens 4-2, and Rivers Angels, Delta Queens, a game a lot of people wanted to see, and, and uh, as you will expect, uh, just uh, fine margins there, 1-0 in favor of Rivers Angels. All right, uh, Austin, your thoughts quickly, and KD said it on Tuesday, uh, that maybe the, the ladies, uh, or the Atlant ladies probably should be representing the guys. They seem to be getting the result, but that's for last anyway. Your thoughts? Mm. Yeah, you know, good good win for for Heartland Queens, you know, to keep uh, their fine from going on that Group A table. But we know that, that since the draws were made. We weren't so, you know, keen about what's going to happen in Group A. It's Group B, everyone seems to be talking about. Rivers Angels, for instance, had a very difficult match against Delta Queens. They had to win, and they did. 1-0, Chiamaka was the only goal in that game to keep Rivers Angels, keep their relevance on that group. Edo Queens, I said it, that if the league resumes and they beat Rivers Angels, they just have to keep that momentum going just so that they can make it easily into the Super Six. And that was the fantastic result for them. I love it when we see goals in the Women's League, six goal trailer, Edo Queens 4, Sunshine Queens 2. You know, clear testament that the league is actually competitive. And I like what Damnella Ronifadi said. Let's keep calling out the officials to keep reminding them that we've got the talent, we've got the personnel, but... Um, administration needs to be on point for the league to get a required branding you know if you can post results for stopping you from posting the tables and this is where some people will start saying oh tomorrow if something goes wrong or you can't check where there's supposed to be one there's zero or two there's one somebody will start you know saying that people are not transparent so it's very very important this is a professional league i love the fact that we saw loads of goals uh midweek football seems to give us that you know so let's keep it going this is women's football and i love the fact that this season even the small teams, Ninja Retails, Rebel Ladies, they, they got us talking at some point. You know, yes, we know the traditional teams, we actually go on to play the Super Six, but we love the fact that these teams are competing, and that's what we want for league women's football development, you know, in Nigeria, I mean. Um, Dabla Life, you can in a few seconds. Any of the results come to you as a surprise? Um, none really. Um, I, I think the biggest highlight for me was the Rivers Angels Delta Queens. That's some kind of a derby. And uh, you knew that was going to be very, mm -hmm. very difficult. And so um, a 1 0 scoreline probably just um, is, is probably one of the expected results uh, from that game if you don't get it wrong. Yeah, we know it was always going to be very, very tight. All right, we need to go uh, on the break uh, right around this time. And uh, of course, when we'll come back, we'll take a look at uh, the table and of course we'll look at uh, what's happening with the Super Falcons and of course we'll uh, talk about all of the other issues in your fast pace, money, speeding and rewarding water sports. All right, welcome back. Uh, let's continue from where we left it off 
as the teams uh, continue to jostle for the top, uh, for the Super Six in uh, the Women's uh, League. Let's show you what it looks like uh, in uh, the groups. Let's start with Group A and what it looks like. Uh, there you have it. Uh, Atlanta Queens leading the way, followed closely by Nazra Amazons and uh, Complex Queens in that order. Atlanta with 21 points, Nazra Amazons with uh, 20. Conflict Queens with 19, and Royal Queens in a place you don't want to be uh, <laughs> below water, if I can put it that way. All right. Okay, let's flip quickly and uh, take a look at uh, Group B, what it looks like. Bioso Queens on top uh, with 22 points, followed uh, by Rivers Angels, uh, 21 points, and of course, Edo Queens, 19 points. And um, just like Austin said, he, he might likely head uh, this way, uh, and of course, they'll take the battle too. Not a super six. All right, let's move on quickly now and talk about uh, the eagerly anticipated game, Olympic qualifier between uh, the Super Falcons of Nigeria uh, and, of course, their counterparts from South Africa, uh, Banyana. Banyana. Uh, of course, players have been invited uh, to camp for that game to take place next week. And so uh, we look at the players, uh, we look at the list uh, in a bit. And um, maybe I'll just quickly run through that to allow uh, Dabilola to uh, talk about it. Uh, and of course, uh, we'll probably uh, put in our thoughts as well. Well, uh, the list uh, of uh, the players, you have um, the goalkeepers, Chama Kanadoze, Tochuko Luehi, and uh, Linda Jawaku. She plays for Bielsa Queens. Uh, those are uh, the goalkeepers. For uh, the defenders, Oshinashi Ohale, Ashley Plumta, uh, Shukurat Oladipo, Michelle Alozi, Nicole Payne, and Chidi Maokeke. Uh, of course, six of them uh, will be. Uh, the defenders in the team. Midfield, uh, we have Deborah Abiodo, Halimato Aide, Christy Ucheibe, Jennifer Chegiri, Chidat, Ajibadi, and of course, Tony Payne. Uh, well, the forwards, very, very loaded. Uh, Amori Sola, Baba Jide, Esther Koronko, Ifioma, Onumonu, Aziza Doshola, Ucheda Kanu, Gifts Monday, and of course, Chiwendu, Ihezuo. Uh, I love this. A lot of these players, fantastic players, uh, any day could hold their own against uh, any team. WL, let me come to you. Um, as good as these girls are, most of them have not been to the Olympics. Most of them have not been to the Olympics because strangely, strangely, <laughs> strangely, it's been a long time that we've been to the Olympics. Uh, and it's quite strange because uh, we've been playing against the African opposition. And we've dominated Africa for a long time. And the Nations Cup will beat the them. The Nations Cup will beat them. But when it comes to the Olympics, we'll something find happens. find our way. But going to the Olympics, we'll do, I mean, we've not been to the last three Olympics. Yes. I'm right. Yeah, the last three bad? Olympics. And that cumulatively, that's about um, 12 years that we've not been to the Olympics. Uh, and quite, uh, quite worrying as far as... Uh, uh, Nigeria Super Falcons is concerned. This is not going to be any easier. In actual fact, this is going to be a lot more difficult because we are now playing the African champions. We are not playing South Africa now as the African champions. We are uh, on paper, um, possibly the underdogs. <laughs> Many might not like that statement, but it is what it is. And so it's not going to be easy, uh, but I think that we have the players to get it right. Um, over 180. I need to pause you and quickly uh, do this. Uh, you know, with Channels TV, uh, the news comes first. Let's take this piece of uh, breaking news. Uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria has unveiled new minimum capital requirements for banks and gives them 24 months to recapitalize. The Apex Bank pegs the minimum capital base for commercial banks with international authorization at 500 billion naira. The acting director of corporate communications department at CBN, Ms. Akama Sidi Ali, said the new minimum capital base for commercial banks with nas national authorization is now 200 billion naira, while the new requirements for those with regional authorization is 50 billion naira. Uh, Mrs. Sidi Ali also disclosed that the new minimum capital for merchant banks would be 50 billion uh, naira. What the new requirements for non-interest banks with national and regional authorizations are uh, 20 billion and 10 billion respectively. This is just coming in and of course you get uh, further details in uh, subsequent 
uh, bulletins, especially uh, the news that said the flagship. All right, so uh, let's move on uh, with uh, the show. Trust us, you get more of this uh, later on. Uh, let's move on with the show. Damlala, you quickly, uh, you were talking about uh, the ladies, and um, will it be different this time? Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, I, I said we have the players, um, but over 120 minutes of football, it, it's about the performance from the first leg to the second leg. Um, I think we must get a win, a very good win uh, in the first leg, because we're playing at home first before we go to South Africa, and, and that will make the second leg a lot more easier. Uh, if we do not get a good enough win, and when I mean a good enough win, I'm talking about the various minimum, a two-goal margin. It's going to be more difficult in South Africa because that will be the decider. Um, if at the end of the day, hence in a draw, you will be going to penalties right there in South Africa and the pressure, it's on you. It might be too much. But hopefully, it's going to be our time. All right. <laughs> uh, Patriotism taking the better of that, Gloria. Uh, Austin, I, I have a feeling it's going to be different this time out, uh, but you have to take the Bayana Bayana seriously. Of well, course, you know, they've, they've shown that they can actually be the model for women's football in Africa. Uh, they've done so well under Desiree Ellis. The government, they've invested so much in this team. And that's the difference. Let's be realistic. That's the difference between this South African team and the Nigerian team. The amount of attention that they've gotten from their government. And each time they have an opportunity to get on the pitch, they show workings. On the other, on the flip side, the Super Falcons with less attention, and sometimes when we see the kind of treatment they receive, they don't let it bother them. They still go out there to give the best. A clear testament that talent, again, is not a problem. I saw what they did against Cameroon, and I asked them questions. But while I was asking those questions, I also had at the back of my mind that women's football in Africa is growing. You know, so when you play Cameroon, Morocco, Zambia, and South Africa, then you've got to be careful. It's not the football of three years ago because these teams, they've grown. They have done so well for themselves. So I would concentrate on Nigeria and the players that we have. Look at this South African team and see the quality all over. And 90% of this team, I mean, they've been playing together for the last seven years. That tells you the sort of synergy that they've got together as a team. So it's going to be very tricky. I'd like to see the Super Falcons show that they can actually bust the game. Bust the game, put pressure on them, score early goals, score at least three goals in Abuja, so that when you go to South Africa, you're not going to be under pressure because South Africa, they will go, they're going to come all out. They, they will attack. And if they do that, then we know we've got a far power to punish them. I've been saying it that, yes, while we concentrate so much on Rashida Ajibade and Asisa Toshola, there's a gift Monday who is a fantastic player, and if she gets a chance to play, she will prove a point. That's what it takes when, that's what it does when you have competition in a team. Look at how uh, Deborah Apiodun got into this team, and she is showing quality, because when she looks by her left, she sees Christy Uchebe. When she looks to this other side, she's seeing Alima Tuwainde. So she must impress, because this is a team where if you don't show workings, you you miss out of the team. So yes, we've got the quality. Coach Randy Wardrum just needs to tell them that this is a very difficult game. But hey, you've not been to the Olympics since London 2012. So stop this now. Beat South Africa and qualify for the Olympics. All right. Uh, and uh, before we go to Super Eagles, I'm like a quick one. Uh, this one just came to my mind. Uh, you know, when I see Wafu A, Wafu B, shouldn't Calf be more deliberate about these things sometimes? Because at the end of the day, you want a very good outing for Africa at the Olympics. If, if the heavyweights are slugging it out, you're going to probably get a lightweight go represent Africa. Shouldn't they be deliberate? I, I, I'm, I'm still struggling to understand the, the mindset of that <laughs> distribution of Wafwe and Wafubi because I think it has really hurt us to have I, I'm just using that as now, an example. I, I get what you're saying. It has really helped us to get our best into even Kito, even the WAFCON itself. If that's yes. denied some key um, countries, it's going to happen in this it's case. It's going as to well. happen. It will happen. Because uh, 
you, you can't get both. You're going you to get, get one. Both. You're only going to get one. Imagine if you can have both nations at the Olympics, but, but we're going to deny ourselves that opportunity. So it's, it's a challenge. Um, and I think it's something Kava has to rethink uh, yeah. because apart from the senior men's level, it's the system that we now use across mm -hmm. um, every cadre of football on the continent. I, I really don't and understand. And we're neutralizing ourselves and we're neutralizing, as a force. And making ourselves weaker when we go to the global tournament. All right, uh, that's just food for thought. All right, let's talk about the Super Eagles. And, um, and a, a lot of people, I mean, opinions get divided when you talk about the Super Eagles. So let me just yield the floor uh, to Austin. Maybe I'll get the chance to say something now. <laughs> and, uh, but Austin, two games uh, under coach uh, Finiti George's belt. Yeah. We don't know what's going to happen, it's, if he's going to get yeah. the job uh, full time. I still think two matches is still not enough, especially with the amount of injuries that he mm. had on his hands. But then again, people have asked the right questions, that if you play the way you played against Ghana and you could translate play into goals, you should have gotten better against Mali. And I think those are valid questions. I like Finney the judge. He's intelligent. He listens. He knows how to identify problems before going about looking for the solutions. But something just went wrong against that Mali game. They were moving the ball around, but they didn't just know what to do with it in terms of final execution, you know? And why, why, we, why we, we, we say it's two matches, people are also asking questions. I think the judge has been with Jose Pizarro and knows this team, and he's somebody who has also said he would like to have a chance at the job. But unfortunately, this is football where anything can happen, you know. Let's listen to Finiti George. I want to listen to him again. I will come back, we'll talk, and I'll go to Damla on Friday in Lagos because it's important for us to read and give analysis from the angle that the major players are coming from. Finiti George on the show tonight. I think uh, those few mistakes uh, cost us the, the match. Um, it was not a bad game. Um, good intensity. Um, we created a couple of chances. We didn't score. And, um, you know, a game like this, if you don't score and you make uh, some mistakes, I think uh, you'll be punished. But I think I'm happy with the way the boys played. And, uh, yeah, um, it's, it's quite positive. You see, this is a team that keeps the ball very well. If you are, we have used one striker, I think um, we would have changed that striker immediately. You know? So um, using two strikers, I think, uh, helped us, forced them to play wide. Um, yeah, where we, we could press a little bit more. Um, but it's an aggressive team, we know. We talked about it. Um, but yeah, and football being what it is, it's all about victory. But I'm looking at uh, other aspects of the, the game, which I feel we controlled, um, created some chances, and we couldn't score. So um, on the overall, I'm quite happy. I think the first game also we did so well. You know, um, I would have loved a different result, but um, that's not the case. But if you look at the performance of the players, I think um, it was commendable. We committed that blunder and uh, they got that goal. Uh, from that moment, they, that, that helped them build their confidence and they played a little bit better, you know. Uh, in the second half, we knew we had nothing to lose. We had to come all out and um, they, they, they sat deep. Um, they played more defensive, but um, in as much as they did that, we, we had one or two, two chances to have scored. You know? So if you look at the game, if you just take away those two goals, um, you think we were the team winning. You know? So um, football, that's how it is, um, being what it is. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. It's a friendly game. Um, you see one or two players that, um, that can be used in the future. So um, that's the most important thing. So that's it, uh, Super Eagles interim manager, Finity Judge. That's why I wanted us to listen to him. So you look at, oh, Austin is giving excuses for the team. Bramila Rani Fadi, he said it wasn't a bad game for Team Nigeria. Do you agree? I disagree with him. Uh, it was a bad game. Um, uh, I, he tried to say the right things, but he said two things that I totally 
uh, disagree with. I mean, he said, if you take out the two goals, you can't take out two goals in football. Football is about goals. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing was, if you take out the two goals, you think we are the ones winning. When you are down, you are supposed to be the one pressing the other team. For crying out loud, you are not supposed to be the one on the back foot because you are losing. And you, you consider the first goal in the first half anyway. So I, I, I think he was trying too hard to justify what they tried to do. I mean, it, there, is, there, is, there is dignity is just accepting that we tried something new and it didn't work out. For me, that's better. It's a better approach uh, because the players must know and they listen to their coaches. The players must know when the coach accepts that, okay, we made this error, guys, we need to go again. This is the next time we had the no, opportunity. No, let me bottom quickly. Should the decision on whether he gets the job or not be based on these two matches? Um, unfortunately, it will. Because you know what, most of the, if, if for example, we have two decisions to make. First of all, if we want a local coach, Finindi of the names that we've heard, is probably the most active of the local coaches. He's mo Correctly. most act active. Uh, apart from maybe Ndubi uh, Seigo, that is also coaching currently. Uh, so if we are coming down to that, so the next thing will be that, what has he done? That's why I said, Finindi going into these two games is a very difficult situation. While Holder still has the, um, the, 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 you don't have anything to judge them as far as the Super Eagles job is. For Finidi, you can tell what you will. Uh, there is something to assess him with. And it can be pretty unfair on him if you are using these two games. Okay, that's what yeah, I wanted to hear. Because there is pressure. It, it will be unfair, really. But unfortunately, it is what it is. Um, your result is what we are going to judge you by. We, because you don't have any other thing to judge you Reminds with. me of a player who, yeah. who got just one chance in the Super Eagles. I think it was Peter Ije. One chance. And, and, and that, that was it. it. And that was it. That, that was it. And, and, the, and the guy never had a chance. And there was one that had one chance. Did a scissors kick pre-World Cup. Yeah. The scissors kick it was it. Never good, repeated but it was good enough for him to go never to the World Cup. Never repeated the scissors kick <laughs> again. All right. Uh, let's listen to Kenneth. Still talking about that game anyway. Let's listen to Kenneth Omero uh, speak after that game. And of course, we'll come back to still talk more on um, what's going to happen next with the Super Eagles, you know, in June, uh, the crucial qualifiers will take place. So let's listen to Kenneth Romero, we'll come back for more sports tonight. I think it's, uh, it's good, it's uh, fantastic. I will not talk about the players that are not here, you know, but at least we, we could play, you know, good football between ourselves. And, uh, yeah, we just didn't, didn't uh, score goals. You know, it's a friendly game to test ourselves um, when the World Cup qualifiers comes, we can, you know, do better. Uh, very good, good uh, relationship with the players, you know. Um, He's someone we know, we respect, you know, he has a great experience uh, to lead us and I think uh, he's managed the team uh, very well. All right, Kenneth Omero, um, I said I was going to say it, you know, too. Um, my opinion is the players we have, the players we have in the Super Eagles are good enough. But we need to, we need to clearly define what we want. So the NFF should... I mean, stop avoiding, what do you want? Where are we going? Mm -hmm. Say that clearly. Between, you have like two months between now and June. Say it clearly. I don't, we shouldn't go to June and still have an interim coach. So whatever you want to do, make it clear. I don't know if Austin agrees. Dabla is taking his time before he responds. <laughs> I don't know if Austin agrees with what I just said. Let's be clear. Yeah. Let's define what we want. And football development does not stand at end with national teams. Although that's another conversation. That's right, but we know that, that for, for the NFL, that's what it is. I totally agree with you, Yemi, and I said it right after the AFCON. I said the NFL, the first thing you should do is say if you're going to keep Pizarro or let him go. That Pizarro issue, we took another, I think about one more month before we said, okay, Pizarro is not around again. Then they put out a vacancy. All of these things affected him mentally, and we know with Super Eagles to get a coach properly appointed and confirmed you know I mean, in six months. Mm -hmm. That's NFF. Mm -hmm. It's six months. And that is not good for our football. We've just come out of the AFCON where we made it to the final. We should, because everything rises and falls on leadership. The fact that even Finidi John, if he knows that this is his job, he has been confirmed, the approach will be different. The mental state will be different then you know that you are getting the job done, you know? So I agree with you, but we've been through this time and time again, the Nigeria Football Federation, 
they just have their own way they operate so we, we just need to wait uh but as i said earlier we can give any the judge a chance on this job because i've looked at him from afar i've seen his his tactics with the team i like the way he analyzed the game against um ghana i think if he, if he continues that way with the team and we've got a full complement of the team then they will actually play better on that finity judge but this is football again where anything can happen you know and yes people were expecting because if you were good against ghana you should be better against mali that's progress you know but with football it doesn't work that way so first thing first confirm a coach yes i know they are receiving applications now it's about the match is ending now um in april tell us people that have been shortlisted people you're talking to uh, let's get it out of the way so the person will come in and start you know working with this team we cannot take 10 steps forward and 20 steps backward yeah. it's not good for our football it's not good at all we have barely barely over a minute and um, still talking about the super eagles moses simon we we just had uh, it's going to be out uh, for the season. That's a massive blow for the Super Eagles. Uh, blow for the Super Eagles leading up to uh, June. Um, probably even a bigger b blow for Nans, um, considering they are very mm -hmm. difficult mm -hmm. season so far. And even maybe a much bigger blow for the player himself, uh, because yeah. if anything happened at Nans, he probably would be looking at exiting the club and not to have the opportunity to play between now and then, put him in a very difficult situation. But more importantly, is his health. All right, let, before I let you go, I want to give the floor to us in Tonali, uh, the um, Sandro Tonali, the Italian Newcastle has, uh, uh, the, NF, the uh, English FA has charged him. Is, the Italian FA has already is under suspension, suspension yeah. but this one now do you think anything different for what has already happened we happened because i'm looking at this is he's already under the hammer why are you bringing the charges i, now? I, I don't think anything would happen i think the uh, the ban is on is a global ban that's why it's not playing in england mm -hmm. um so uh, i i don't understand this except well, is there, there is something that's going to start after he heads that that's my point except there is an intent to extend his ban <laughs> Otherwise, uh, I, I don't know why we are. Let me ask the man chance. who should know. Um, Austin, we are here in Newcastle saying uh, they don't feel that uh, anything is going to happen after um, he finishes the ban and they are preparing for him to um, resume with them for the new season. Yeah, but, but the English FA, they, 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 they've come out to say that there's a separate ban. They need to really, uh, there's a separate charge. They need to really come out and explain to us what they're charging him for. But when I saw this story, I mean, and everything that happened to Tonali, I, you know, I remember back when we say from five pounds to fire, <laughs> fire, you know, because now he's trying to come at the football and the English FA, they are just there waiting. And I'm sure until they come out to pronounce it, they are still investigating him. And they're just saying, look, um, you broke the rules by putting betting in front, which is, which is a breach to standards. And then now we have found out new things against you, but just know that this is what it is. We're going to come back with more details and then we'll know what we're going to do with you. But, but we're fine. We, don't, we do not have any charges on the show tonight. We started so well and we're about to end it so well. That's the show in London. I'm Austin O'Connor In everything you do, remember, Let's keep talking sports. Bye for now. All right, it's a wrap. Before we go, I want to especially thank Dan Lelone Fadi for his time on the show. Hopefully, uh, we'll do this again some other time. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, as a promise on live TV. <laughs> All right, that's the show today. Uh, we hope you enjoyed everything we've been able to bring to you. We'll do this again tomorrow. I'm Amy Adebayo. Bye-bye now.